Have you ever been playing a horror game only for it to do, uh, nothing? Welcome to Mascot Horror, the pinnacle of everything that is scary. <laughs> <laughs> These games are blowing up in popularity right now, but for what? The cheap jump scares? The zero effort game design? The merch they shove down your throat? Lucky for you, that's exactly what I'm gonna be trying. I mean, there's no way this genre really is that easy, right? Well, I have my suspicions. I did this before in only 5 hours, and it did much better than it should have, proving just how little effort goes into these. So I'm giving myself 10 hours, because as I've been told, I could somehow do worse. So much worse. A great way to know if you've played one of these games is, ah, not another jump scare. Gee, I sure love walking, I hope there's more. Anyone know when the horror update is coming? Damn, I can't wait to buy a t-shirt with this thing on it. Anyone could make this game in a day and become a millionaire. Wait, anyway, today I'll be turning into a millionaire, so let's make a true mascot horror game the way God intended. Each mascot horror game starts with a big ass stuffed animal that we'll put in our merch shop. The big ass stuffed animal I'm going to be using is Stinky. He's just so adorable, but to be honest, I just don't think he's profitable enough. So after a quick makeover, he's ready to be textured, which I'll make similar to earlier, but this time I'll remember the first rule of horror. Blood equals scary. Unfortunately, our target age demographic is 6 year old kids, so we'll mention in the shallow ass lore that he loves cranberry juice. And just like that, he's ready to be sold. By far the easiest, most lazy way to do gameplay is to make sure there's as little content as possible while still forcing the player to spend the maximum amount of time on it. Exhibit A, Garden of Ban Ban. First things first, you find a mentally challenged flamingo who asks you to feed it six of its own eggs, and who would have guessed? A kindergarten, which looks like it was modeled by a kindergartner. By minute 20 of that fetch quest, enough of your brain cells have died to medically pronounce you brain dead, so for whatever reason, you check this pitch black corner under a slide, only to find out that's exactly where the developer wanted you to look. Unfortunately, there's some wooden planks completely and utterly blocking this doorway, so you decide that a hammer would do the job, which should be pretty easy to find if it wasn't for our lobotomized drone. And before you even notice, that's half an hour of your life that you're never getting back. Is the best free-to-play game of the year so far. So it's time to make the scariest place known to man. The colorful, poorly made children's daycare with only the finest free models from the Unity Asset Store. In order to make a map like a mascot horror dev, you need to think like them. Something that personally helped me get into that headspace was my favorite Mr. Krabs quote. Money, money, money. Each of the models is carefully placed by hand to ensure that all of it makes total sense. We delicately check each and every prop to make sure that it's the right size, and with that we have the inverted bunk bed, the table, massive ketchup, and more. And of course, some top tier, not at all cliche, environmental storytelling. Help. Run. Get out of here while you still can. Ah. Oh no, something terrible happened here. Stoinky ate my grandma! I mean, is it even a children's daycare without a maze and a forest room with blood riding on the walls? Not on my watch. It's time to put Stinky in his place, which is apparently the void. Which means we need some collisions, so let's play a little game. What shape collision should this box have? That's correct, a cube. What shape should this slide have? Well done, a cube. What collision shape should this swing set have? That's right, a goddamn cube. Ketchup, cube, tree, cube, bed, cube, wardrobe, cube, sink, cube, toilet. But as you saw earlier, poor Stinky is really stiff right now because I haven't put a bone in him yet. Pause. So I'll do my best to jam some in there because this is really where my area of expertise ends, so thank you for what is not what a true mascot horror dev would say because we stop at nothing for money. After a while, I got it working, uh, kind of, but it's good enough to the point where he can move, and it seems like the first thing he's decided to do was stand in the background of the main menu as a constant reminder of how stinky this game is. You might be wondering where all the buttons from the main menu are, and that's a great question, where the fuck are they? To start, I'm gonna put a nice little play button right here, and a quit button right next to it. And last, but definitely not least, the massive merch button. Because remember, we're selling the merch and not the game, so I'm just gonna reorganize it a little and... Ooh, perfect. In plain English, we call what I'm about to do an update, but in mascot horror terms, we call it chapter 2 with a shiny new price tag and some sweet sweet merch. So welcome to Stinky is Sleepy, chapter 2. 
I could just slap him onto a t-shirt and make a plushie, but those are boring, so here are my inventions. Introducing the Stinky Toenail Clippers. The highly requested Stinky Breath Perfume. Our Stinky Toilet Paper, which is now in 7 unique flavors. After the lawsuit, I'm no longer allowed to sell the Stinky Is Sleeping Pills, so we replaced it with our brand new patented Unwelcome Mat. And the Stinky Tooth Brush, featuring our new blood flavored toothpaste. You can also get the life-size stinky cardboard cutout. I'm 7 foot 1 for reference. After purchasing all those gorgeous products, you'll probably want to play the game. But let's really make sure that you got some merch first. And after that, uh, nothing. So let's make some cursed gameplay. Which means it's time for the main mechanic. Walking, which I'm obviously not going to program myself. <laughs> what am I, a game developer or something? I'll drop a cylinder into the scene, I'll slap a camera on him, and give the player nausea too with the much needed head bobbing. And then, arguably the most recognizable part of any bad horror game, the hand. So first, I put my hand in a blender. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, I modeled a hand in blender. Then, I made the flashlight model of all time and put it through the hand. Notice how it's specifically not allowed to look like the hand is holding it. Then, just make sure it doesn't point to the middle of the screen, and make sure it clips through walls. Now all that's left to do is to tie it all together with the disgusting walk animation, and make sure it does not sync up with the footstep sound. And let's not forget the sprint mechanic, where the only running you'll be doing is running out of stamina. And yep, that's the player done. But for the sake of the intense immersion that we associate with these games, I'm gonna go above and beyond, and voice act the character myself. I've mysteriously woken up in a children's daycare with no memory of how I got here. I should probably get out. Unfortunately, the players don't spend nearly long enough time on our tiny map, so I'll add some barriers to make more gameplay. Since it's not one of these games without a fetch quest, your first obstacle is the Door of Nine Locks. For which, you guessed it, need nine keys that are collected with the most f***ing frustrating interaction system that I've ever made. But I need something else to block this doorway, and I know just the thing. Introducing the wet floor sign, which is ever so slightly in your way. Did you seriously think you could fit under that thin wooden plank? No, 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 no. You'll have to find the jackhammer first. But how will you get it? It's behind the impenetrable wet floor sign. Well, you're in luck because I hit a button in the dark somewhere which causes an earthquake and makes the sign fall over. Oh, and it wakes Stinky up too. Cue oh no, the anticlimactic chase stinky. sequence. And to better understand the objective, I'll finally give you some lore. He wasn't always this stinky or sleepy. Something terrible happened. He was a normal plushie belonging to a child in the daycare. But one day, the child didn't get his cranberry juice and died of dehydration in his sleep while holding Stinky. His soul transferred into the plushie. He became huge and developed an insatiable appetite for cranberry juice. Stinky still roams the halls of that kindergarten, unable to sleep, but cursed with hands too big to operate a light switch, resorting to taking his anger out on the people in the building. But deep down, he hopes that if one day he might fall asleep, he'll wake up in his old body once again. It really brings a tear to your eye, doesn't it? Um, y you know what else it does? Hopefully helps the community of this game talk about it on their own channels and boost the popularity of the game even more. So now there are buttons for lights around the map which you have to turn off for Stinky. And of course, your own well-being. Speaking of your well-being, um, uh, let's remove it. I've been hard at work making some really in-depth AI for Stinky to make him stand out from all the other monsters. So to better understand it, here's a diagram of his behavior. We still have one huge problem though. What will all the YouTubers put on their thumbnails? That's right, the pinnacle of horror, the jump scare. I'll make the coolest, most advanced jump scare animation on the planet. And then, I'll harness my inner demon to record a <clears throat> spine-chilling jump scare sound. I just want you to know that it's midnight and I live in a densely populated area, which means the police are probably on their way right now, so let's finish the rest of the game really quickly. Ah! The subscribe button! Quick, defend yourself! Don't hesitate to smack the shit out of it! Phew, that was close. This is truly the jump scare animation of all time. I really hope I didn't give anyone a heart attack because then you can't join my really cool Discord server. I also hired a professional animator to make the- Haha, <laughs> really got you there, didn't I? Guess what? I actually didn't hire a professional animator. It was me all along, in five minutes. 
Um, oh, reviewing the other games, it still seems like I spent too much time making it. At this point, you might be wondering how this game will gain the mass attention of the internet, and to that, my answer is, Hey Markiplier, I put your beautiful face in the map somewhere, come find it. And I'll also quickly send out a tweet telling MatPat how amazing my lore is. And while on the topic of easter eggs, you know that guy from Banban? -Ban? Obviously, I also need to make Stinky peek around the corner because it's the best way to introduce a monster. Thankfully, the voice acting really sells this moment. I think there's something scary hiding here. I should probably run. After the door, after the earthquake and the jackhammer, the chase begins as you desperately press all of the light switches. You finally turned all of them off. But what's that? Not the door of 11 locks. Darn, I just turned all of the lights off. How will I find the keys? And that's the genius of this genre, backtracking. A great way to reuse content without adding anything of substance to the player's experience. Let me ask you a question. What's the most anticlimactic ending you can think of? Well, I'm somehow about to exceed all of those expectations. But first, let's watch this thrilling trailer. So once you defeat the door of 11 locks, you are greeted by the room of light switches, where only one of them works. But plot twist, it's actually a button that opens the doors. Now Stinky is after you. There's a million thoughts racing through your mind, but there's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. You watch in horror as Stinky bumps his big fat head off the light bulb and falls asleep right there on the spot. And to tie all of it together just like any good story, it was all a dream. So next time you see a game and be like, wow, I'm sure they put a lot of effort into this, realize that I did this in 10 hours. 10 hours, okay? And I'm not charging you for this, I'm not trying to shove my merch down your throat, but what if I was? I'm very embarrassed for making this game, but with your help, we can blow it up and get it big enough to hopefully wake some people up and make them realize how goddamn lazy this is. It's so terrible, I don't even want to release it, but it's for a good cause.